Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So we've got an unboxing video today, but there are perhaps one or two things that are slightly different to the usual unboxings that I do here on the channel. So first of up really is that uh, I know what's in this one for a change. I don't normally know, so that's something. But let me just preface this video by saying that I live in rural England and getting hold of old boomboxes, eight tracks, vintage electronic games, Walkmans, all that kind of stuff doesn't leave me many options. Now, we don't have much around here on, for example, Facebook Marketplace. You can literally not find anything for 100 miles or more. And um, Gumtree is just useless. We don't have thrift stores like in the US, for example. Yes, we do have some second-hand shops, but that really just sells dusty old clothes and 1970s veneered coffee tables. They're not actually allowed to sell electronic goods. So, we can't really have anywhere else much to find things like this except for eBay. And I buy a lot of stuff on eBay. And generally speaking, it tends to arrive fairly safely, but there are many, many horror stories, some of which I must put into a compilation video for you one day, where things are literally just sent in a bit of newspaper or a carrier bag and arrive in various amount of broken parts. I don't know what's in here at the time of opening, so here we go. Oh, you are kidding me. However, this one today, I wanted to share with you because it arrived yesterday, in fact. I've still not opened it because I was waiting to do the video for you guys. And I thought when the postman delivered it, I thought it was like a scene from Indiana Jones or something. It was like the, you know, opening the Ark of the Covenant or something. It was just like, wow, what's in this old crate? Some old Egyptian monument or something like that. So anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's all encased in a purpose-built plywood case. I mean, this is fantastic. I mean, top marks to the guy that's actually made this, and I will be able to reuse it as well. So yeah, super, super cool. I mean, that is just, how amazing is that, that someone's made a proper, decent, you know, rip-cut plywood case for this unit? That's, that's just something else. So anyway, let's get on and open it up. And I'm guessing that the first, first thing I'm gonna wanna do, you just cut the gaffer tape. And there may be a bearer or something because there's screws on the front and screws on the top. Now, normally, again, regular viewers to the channel will know that I uh, use my little pen knife here for opening things up. Today, I need something slightly more robust. So I'm just gonna go and see if I can unscrew these, uh, these screws on the top for a moment. Okay, well that's the screws out. And he's also put parcel, <laughs> put parcel tape. I've got to laugh because like, that's just so funny that his big heavy crate has got a little bit of tape on the edges, but actually I guess it does stop people from getting splinters during handling. I normally only get splinters when I uh, scratch my head. So there you go. Right, okay then. So there's the lid, beautiful. Well, let's just hope then that this has arrived in one piece. And I'll tell you what, if ever, if ever there was a, wow, void filled down the side, if ever there was a cause to suspect, okay, that's what they've done. Wow, gosh, this is actually screwed through. Now this piece of ply here fits between <laughs> the unit and the handle. And that's screwed into place as well. That's absolutely fantastic. Right, okay, well, let's get this out in a minute. Okay, so that should enable us, should enable us to remove the unit as is. Because of course you guys still don't know what this is yet, or you may have seen it from the thumbnail. I might just do a teaser actually. Here we go. Right. So here's the unit. And as if by magic, a wonderful sharp GF555E has arrived. 
So I'm going to bring you in for a slightly closer look now and we'll see if it works. Okay then, so here it is, the Sharp GF 555E. And yeah, actually it looks like it's in pretty good condition. Now, these are beasts. I've got a 525, which I think uh, I've already done the unboxing video for and I'll be working on that one shortly. So do subscribe and hit the bell for updates. But what a beast this is. So um, what can I tell you? Well, first up, I bought this one because it was in overall pretty good condition. I don't think it works properly. In fact, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But the aerials are intact. The knobs and switches, I think by and large, by and large are present and correct. The sliders are on there. The panel, these panels are often missing. They've generally fallen off because the adhesive has given up the ghost. So this one is complete. All the panels are on there. The buttons are on there. So I always say if everything's present, you've got a good chance of making a really nice unit at the end. This thing weighs a ton. It's absolutely gorgeous. So, okay, what can we say? Well, on the back, I'll start on the back for a change. You can see here that we've got line in and line out RCA jacks. We've also got phono as well. So there's a, there's a record preamp in there. You've got the earth there as well for that preamp. You've also got external mics left and right with the remote activation facility. Plus you've also got external antennas and the two retractable antennas there as well. The battery compartment looks okay. I've got to say, we'll have a proper look another time, but uh, for now, that looks like it's not going to give us too much trouble. So let's just turn this around. The handle, incidentally, um, is pretty stable, pretty stiff. It's not too bad. Um, pretty much stays where you put it. So I don't think it's been moved around a lot. That generally suggests it's been kind of left in one place for a while. And it's not aged in terms of it's not too yellowed or covered in grease or anything like that. So I don't think it's been kept in a dining room, this, uh, in a kitchen or something. It may well have been a dining room or a bedroom or something like that out of direct light, which is awesome, I've got to say. So anyway, it's a, a twin tape deck on this one. And obviously you've got your radio there with your various bands in here. So you've got your... Your function switch here for tape radio and indeed your record player and then you've got your band selector switch which is actually on the side so the switch is on the side here and that's for fm short wave medium wave long wave and you've got the fine tuner there for your short wave as well but the display is actually on a little window just up on the front there so as you rotate that that shows you different bands on there fantastic all right, so your tape deck here, you've got your standard tape, as it were, on the front. So this is this is tape deck one, which has got your normal play, fast forward, rewind, all that kind of stuff. However, you've also got tape two, which is, again, basic functions, but this is the one that records. So that's the, uh, the red record button just there. But the main deck here has got the APLD and that's your auto program locate device so that one there basically allows you to skip between different tracks by finding breaks or little gaps in the in the sound or finding silence between tracks so it will help you to advance to them and this does although i'm not sure exactly how this one works at the moment it does have the edit facility on there so you can kind of program in what you want to put in to i think to record this one uh, onto this one you can actually set the ones that you want to record from on that one so it's pretty um, pretty clever your tape counter is up here and also that's behind the window as well so that keeps a lot of the dust out it's a little bit dusty just wipe that off and your sliders there for your long wave scale and your short wave and your fm scale are on there as well as are your vu meter by way of led progressive lights for left and right they probably, yes, they do. They indicate the battery strength and your tuning strength as well, depending on the mode that you've got the switch set to, one would imagine. So down here is your fader there for your source and your mic. You've also got your mode there for mixing on or off and your little door here, which is the one that controls your record levels, I believe. Switches between normal type one and your chrome tapes. And what else have we got on here? Record mode, auto record level or manual. 
and there's your record levels i think just up in there as well so there's all sorts of features and features and functions that we'll look at in due course but i think it's all pretty much complete all these fins on the side are, are present they haven't been broken quite often they can get chipped that's great i just can't believe how tidy it is actually like i can kind of can believe because i did did pay a little bit of money for this one there are cheaper ones that come up now and again but i always think by the time you try to fabricate parts or locate spares or repair broken casings and stuff it's actually quicker cheaper and easier in the long run just to buy a nice one that's uh, been well looked after i mean even the made in japan sticker on the side is just it looks like it was applied you know two minutes ago it's just beautiful so anyway enough about all of that let's see if the thing actually works at all because it may not even work yet so let's let's just plug it in give it a quick test obviously in a follow-up video we will be looking at this in more detail by the way look at that you don't know if you'll see that i've just extended the aerial and that's literally got so much friction it just feels like it's brand new lovely absolutely phenomenal wow okay so again this might not be the best positioning for the radio but let's try it anyway Okay, here we go then. Let's see if we can power this on. The volume to minimum. The balance has got a nice detent in the middle as well. All right, well, we've got power. So she's on FM there. So let's see if we can get any signal. We'll turn the volume up a touch. Yep, I'll call that a win. Okay. Whether we'll find anything elsewhere. Ah, oh, I think we probably just need to clean this. The switch probably just needs a bit of a clean, that's all. But the FM works, so that's the main thing. So let's put this now over to, to tape. By the way, um, you can select, I think the APLD here is for um, selecting the different track numbers on the tape. I think you can press that as sort of a one touch thing as well, but we'll come back to that in another another video and there'll be people screaming at me now so who know much much more about these particular units i am new to this particular model so i'm going to be finding out as i go and um we'll go from there so anyway so let's have a look v so there's your vu oh yeah the light works as well you might not see that but that lights up quite nicely actually and right okay so let's go on to tape anyway and let's see what happens with that so if we eject okay well that works nicely and play. Okie dokie. Nice. Yeah, they seem. Okay, let's see. Let's put a tape in and see what happens. It's got a lovely, lovely, lovely feel to it. Okay, so that's forwarding and rewinding. Nice, lovely. Wow, very nice. Okay, that's great. And okay, that door works as well. So let's try and play in this, play in this one. Oh, there's no take-up reel. Hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just noticed the take-up reel wasn't turning there. Rewind and fast forward, yes. And play. Okay, so we've got no we've got no take-up. So I'm gonna be careful because I don't want that to chew my tape up. So it looks like the take-up reel's not turning on the record deck and I've got to say, the mechanism's instant. That was beautiful. That was really nice. Really nice. Mm. 
Gosh, that is instant. That is beautiful. I don't know how it is for speed. I'm going to play something I'm more familiar with. Let's have a listen. That's really not bad, actually, to be fair. And I'll just check the other one again, just to triple check, as it were, and play. Yeah, it's not okay. So the reel definitely works. There's pick up on that because it's turning on fast forward and, and rewind, but just not playing. So we need to service that and it, it could be uh, the linkage the, the belt or the, um, the transfer rubber or something. So we'll get that apart. We'll take the mechs out, give them a good service, give them a deep clean, clean the capstans, the pinch roller, the heads, um, put new belts on, as I say, get it all running nice and smooth, lubricate it where required lubricate some of these switches and sliders just in case any of them need it um yeah wow and just give the chassis a nice deep, decent deep clean really and polish it up and that should be that so yeah quite a long video today especially for an unboxing one and it's a complicated little beastie i mean there's so many other things you know so many different uh, functions on here you've got your tape here you can looks like you can loop tape one onto tape two you can probably repeat tape one or tape two You've got a timer standby on there, all sorts of stuff. So we'll find out more. If you've got one and you've got particular features that you like about this, then do let me know. Let me know what I've missed. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Consider subscribing. We've got a whole bunch of repairs and restorations already on the channel, but we've got loads of stuff coming up as well. It's going to get proper exciting over the next few months. So um, I'm looking forward to getting my head down in the workshop and bringing you some repairs and restorations. In the meantime, stay safe. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.